Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and today I have something super cool to share with you that was sent to me from Tim Holtz. Thanks, Tim. I've got some very cool archival Distressed Ink mini ink pads in the Tim Holtz Distressed Color line. So I've got two boxes of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 24 very cool mini ink pads to play with today and work in my small space right on the desk in my studio. Studio. Today I am reviewing and demonstrating the Tim Holtz Distressed Archival Inks from Ranger. They come in sets of four and they have these great little storage tins and they're mini ink pads as you can see so they're very portable for on the go and they also store quite nicely in these two little tins and look at all the colors that you can get in this small amount of space so what I love about the Tim Holtz Distress Archival Ink is that they are archival and they're oil based. So the colors are going to be permanent and fade proof being archival and being oil based. They're also not going to reactivate with water. So today I'm going to be using watercolor over these beautiful inks and stamping in my mixed media watercolor tag journal that I made in a previous video with Joggle's pre-cut watercolor tags. So I've just cut and put this journal of beautiful watercolor tags together and this project is one that I chose for portability. So since you can get all these wonderful colors of the Distress Oxide Tim Holtz inks in these two little tins, and you can take this little mixed media watercolor journal on the go. I'm also featuring a water brush so that you don't have to bring any water for your watercolors, a very small foam stamp, and a very small portable watercolor box. And the um, Ranger Mini Ink Blending Tool. So with the water brush, you don't need any water and you clean it, uh, you squeeze it and the water comes through the barrel into the brush and to clean it, you just flush out the tip with water and wipe it on a paper towel until the water runs clear. So you can take this kind of a project um, to the doctor's office, to the dentist's office, when you're sitting in your car in the pickup line at school, or if you just don't want to pull out all of your supplies and you want to work in a small space on the desk or even while you're watching television. So this is a wonderful small portable project that I thought would be a nice way to showcase these really cool, brightly colored inks and um, darker color inks uh, in the set. I just love these archival ink pads because they're so mini. They're mini and portable and you can take them on the go and what better than that? Also, if I wanna spread out on my desk and just work in this much space because everything else is a mess and every other surface is covered, I can do that too because they're mini. They're so small and cute. The other thing I love about these tiny ink pads is that they work with tiny foam stamps. When you're trying to get little bits of area of color on something that's at the most three inches high, a mini ink pad is the perfect way to do it. So Tim Holtz pretty much calls these um, warm colors. Uh, so all the pinks and the reds and the yellow are warm colors. Then we're into cool colors and the blues and the greens and then uh, the purples. And then we've got what he calls dirty colors. So we've got the grays, the gray blue, the dark greenish and the brown, the charcoal and the black. So I've divided them that way. Um, and I'm going to give you a little um, example of how I would use these. 
So I'm at my desk in my studio, so I am in a nice small space. I am featuring today um, an Art Foamies uh, bird and branch set that I designed for them, and it is the small version for card making, which fits perfectly in this book. So I've got these little tiny clothespins. You can use any kind of clip that you have to keep the page down flat. And um, so let's get started. So what I like about these little ink pads being um, so colorful and small is that I can ink up this little bird uh, with a couple of different colors using uh, the ink pad because it's small. I can sort of uh, not have to have him all in one color. So I'm gonna use the blue and I'm gonna put that on his head and I'm just gonna dab the little blue ink pad down on his head. This is a blue bird. Uh, then I'm gonna switch to the orange and I'm going to do his body at the top. And I'll even see if I can get a little orange on his beak. I don't know how that'll go since I've already got blue, but we'll see. So the body, I'm gonna do an orange. And the nice thing about them being oil-based is you don't have to worry about hurrying before the ink dries. Uh, I'm gonna come in with the, uh, the grayish for the feet. So I'm gonna stamp his feet in this um, frayed burlap color. They have such great names, the colors. And then I'm going to come back to the tail with a little bit of a darker blue. Let's get this one, the um, faded jean, and see if we can just get that on the tail and not get the foot. I mean, it's not meant to be perfect, right? So if we got a little color in weird places, we're fine. And then he's got these little fuzzy things out the sides and I'm gonna grab this gray, which is uh, hickory smoke and do his little fuzzy wing feathers. And I'm gonna stamp the bird first, sort of in this upper left-hand corner. The nice thing about the foam stamp is it squishes and it allows you to give a lot of pressure so that you can get a good impression. And there, we've got them in some beautiful multicolor. Now, what you wanna do with these, um, because they're um, oil-based, what happens is when you add more ink to the stamp, it will reactivate any ink that's left over. So in other words, if I try to, try to put yellow on here without cleaning it, it'll reactivate the blue and it'll be dirty. So we're just gonna use a baby wipe to get off the ink before we put it away and before we change colors. So a good wipe with a baby wipe. Now I must tell you that Tim Holtz himself sent me these inks, uh, which was quite nice and generous of him. So shout out to Tim. And um, he was the one that gave me the tip with the baby wipes to clean the, the ink off. And he was the one that let me know that they will reactivate. So if they dry on the stamp, um, and you ink it up with another color, it'll reactivate what's left behind and it'll change the color. So we're just gonna give it a good baby wipe. And then I've got the branch portion of this stamp. So I'm gonna come in with the brown that is vintage photo, and I'm gonna use that to ink the branch. So I'm gonna ink the branch pieces of the branch, and then I'm going to do the flowers in a pink. So I'm gonna use Kitsch Flamingo, which is a nice light pink on my dogwood flowers. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the branch and line it up so that it goes across his feet. His feet came out a little green and not very gray, though there may have been some residual ink on there. I don't mind that. So now I'm printing the dogwood branch, making sure it goes across his feet, pressing, making sure I get a good contact. Really nice, I love the way that pink came out. And I'm just gonna wipe off the stems because I'm gonna use this to bring in some more flowers into the background. So I'm just gonna clean off the stems, the branches, the brown. 
And then for a little interest, I'm gonna print more flowers, but in a slightly different color. So I've got a wild honey here that's kind of a nice kind of muted orangey yellow. I'm gonna try that first. Just inking the flowers. And I'm gonna just put some more flowers back here. And I ended up getting a little bit of the stem, that's all right. So I'll put a little flowers here. I wanna suggest that there's lots of flowers in the background. So I'm not inking every time, I'm letting them go faded so they look like they're disappearing into the background. There we go, so he's amongst a lot of flowers. And again, I'm gonna just wipe this off with the baby wipe. When I'm, before I put it away, I'll, I'll run it under some soapy water. So let's set that aside. And now I'm going to watercolor in the bird. So let's put this away. I love these ink pads because they're, like I said, they're little, so they're portable, but they also allow you to get multicolors on small stamps and, and stamp in small areas. And the tins are really a must have for storing and throwing them in your bag. So, okay, so I'm gonna activate the watercolor and squeezing water through the brush into the blue. And I'm gonna give him a little bit of a blue head now, because this uh, ink pad is oil-based, it's not going to move at all with the watercolor applied over the top. So you can brush right over that and not worry about it reactivating or moving. So I'm going to paint the tail in with a little bit of blue. Now, I'm just having fun with these colors. It doesn't have to be exactly like a bluebird. Um, that was a place to start. So I'm squeezing water through the water brush uh, to flush the color out onto the paper towel. And now I'm gonna come into the breast of the bird with some orange and try to get some vibrant orange in there. The key with watercolor is not to paint in every single bit of the area to leave some white sort of poking through to give it some vibrance. So, I'm gonna resist the temptation here, I'm bringing in some yellow, and I'm gonna just resist the temptation to cover all of that. So a little yellow, leaving some white spaces, bringing in a little yellow on the beak, and squeezing through, and then I can squeeze water in here to sort of soft edge it, blend it. But I don't wanna get rid of that all that white of the paper. So on the little um, wing fluffs, I can, come in with a little brown and sort of fluff those out a little further. And then his uh, belly area is white. So I think I'll put a little bit of like a, just a little bit of a teal blue green under here to maybe indicate that that's white underneath. And then I'm gonna come back with a, now that that orange is dried a little bit, an, a second pass of the orange will give me a little bit more vibrance. So I'll, bring, I'll double up. Watercolor is a little bit like stained glass. So if you go over it um, with a second layer, the, the two layers will multiply and get more intense. And you can also overlay with two different colors. Like you can overlap green with, I mean, yellow with blue and get green. So right now I'm just coming in and um, I think I'll come in with a little magenta even and darken up under his chin and just give him a little bit more of a punch of something vibrant. And I'll squeeze some water through that brush and soften that edge. Come down here and I'll squeeze through and I'll get a little bit more of that teal blue and see if I can give a little more of a tint under here, but not cover up too much. There, so, and then I'll bring a little more blue behind this foot, and I'll do another pass on the blue to do the same thing, to give it a little more darkness, intensity. Okay, and now we're gonna come to the flowers. This is so nice because I can work in such a nice small format without spreading out a lot of stuff. 
whether I'm just at my desk or someplace else small. So I'm staying light with magenta here. I don't want to get too dark. I'm going to keep the dark sort of towards the center of the flower. And I'm going to blend that a little bit with water at the edges. Then I'm going to come in and do an orange edge on this flower, just around in the center. Squeeze the water through and hit it to soften the edges. And I'll bring the magenta in under here and this one as well. And come back with a little more magenta just around the center. Darken the intensity with a second layer. And then let's do that on some of the other flowers that are closer up. And then some of them I'll just leave so that they look like they'll fade into the background. So we'll make some of them the darker ink sort of appear closer up and soften that with a little bit of water and maybe i like them pink and i should keep them all sort of uniformly pink so let's add a little pink in here and a little water Water will lighten the color, so a little water wash. And you'll notice it's not changing the ink from the stamp. And, and we'll do one over here. And then we'll let the rest of them just sort of fade and be kind of in the background. There we go. So this is really nice and I'm enjoying the process a lot. And this little tag journal that I made, um, I will link uh, that video in the upper right hand corner for you so that you can see um, this is a wonderful book because you can keep adding pages to it. So once you've, uh, you've used what you originally set out you can always add pages and because you can add pages to it I could actually do this flat and then add it into the book after the fact um, but I like working in the book because it's just um, easier and more portable that way okay so I've got my pink flowers now I'm going to get into the brown and extend my branches so I'm going to bring my branch sort of out further and give it some more sort of thin line. I'll bring it out this way. So I'm filling the page just by following the line of the branch. I missed a spot sort of in here, I think. So I'll put that in there and bring it off the page. That really makes our bird look like he's in an environment here. Soften that up with a little bit of water. And again, layering the watercolor is how you can get it darker. All right, so now I'm going to come back in with a Posca marker and a black pen. And I'm, in the black pen, I'm going to, now that the bird is dry, I'm going to darken his eye. And with my Posca, I'm going to give some little white dots to the center of the flowers where my paint may have filled them in. So bringing back the white. And also, if you want to, you can take the Posca and add some little feather markings to our bird with the white. Give them a little texture. Oh, I just put my hand on the branch there. Oh, that's all right. Let's see. We'll bring a little brown back and there we go. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you about all these wonderful colors of the inks is that you can also use them with the mini ink blending tool. So I'm going to give um, sort of an edge of blue sky around the 
perimeter here. So I'm taking out the uh, Mermaid Lagoon ink pad, and I'm gonna rub the blender tool right into the ink pad, get it inked up, and then I'm just gonna softly swirl that around the background. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? The soft, subtle kind of wash effect of this. So I'm going to bring that all around the edges and I'm going over the flowers that I want to appear in the background. So those are going to be subdued by the blue. So I'm swirling and I'm using the domed refill so I get a nice soft edge all the way around. All right, that's so beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? I just love how this works. It's just so nice to be able to have such portable color. Okay, so I've blended that in and I'm gonna bring in a little bit of green with my watercolor. So I'm gonna grab some, let's see if I can find some green here. Yellow and a little bit of this blue. Ooh, that's not a very pretty green. All right, let's go for something that's already in the box. Here we go. There's sort of a nice yellow green and I just wanted to put a little bit of that sort of in here. It's a little intense, give it, give it a little water and sort of put that in the middle here, suggesting the tree leaves. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that sort of watery. Green and over the blue, even a little bit. This gives it a little bit more color. I'm just going to sort of, I'm going to go over, again, I'm going to go over the flowers here that I wanted to sort of look like they were receding into the background. But I won't go over all of them. Bring it out here to the edge a little bit. Beautiful. And there you have an instant little journal page with items that are completely packable and portable. And the archival properties of these inks, again, they're not going to fade and they're not going to move. So they are something that you can use not only in your sketchbook, but also on your permanent art pieces because they are archival. They're not going to fade in the light and they are going to last the, the test of time. So the colors that um, are in the kits. Again, they come in a sets of four. So I will list all the supplies below the video, but they come in sets of four. And so they're warm colors, they're um, cool colors, and what Tim describes as dirty colors. So these are sort of the uh, dirty colors. So I've divided them up that way in my storage tins. And I'm using, again, the water brush, the mini ink blending tool, and a small portable box of watercolors. And my stamp is from Art Foamies. So thanks for being here. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And I hope that you might check out the Tim Holtz Distressed Archival Ink Mini Pads. And shout out to Tim for sending me these because they're a lot of fun and I really like using them with the watercolor. 
Thank you for being here and thank you for subscribing to my channel. That helps me to present and promote my content. And a big heartfelt thank you to my patrons. It is their subscription that helps to make these videos free and available every week. If you're not familiar with Patreon, Patreon is my subscription-based platform where every week there is a new in-depth tutorial and oftentimes they're multi-part. I've got some that have 19 or 11 installations. So I'm taking a project from the very beginning all the way through to finish. And it is a month to month subscription. You can come and go at any time. And as soon as you sign up, you have immediate access to all previously archived material, including the backgrounds workshop, the Wizard of Oz portrait series workshop, and lots of material. So check out Patreon. The link is going to be at the end of this video. And once again, thanks for being here and I'll see you next week.